AMD actually stands a good chance of winning this time and Nvidia should be very worried. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So when talk of new graphics cards first began to circulate around the internet, you know, right away I thought to myself, well, Nvidia is going to have the fastest card again for sure because, you know, looking at the current market, the RTX 2080 Ti is much faster than AMD's fastest card, the RX 5700 XT. And so I thought to myself, you know, they've got way too long of a hill to climb. They're not going to be able to make up the performance when Nvidia puts out their 3000 series cards. However, you know, as more and more leaks and rumors have been appearing online, I'm beginning to doubt that and think that, you know, AMD has a real shot this time around to actually not only match Nvidia, but potentially also beat them. So let's go ahead and talk about the various things I've been seeing over the last year that makes me think that. So the first thing that tipped me off to the fact that AMD might actually have a real shot of winning this time is that, you know, there's been a rumor that's been persisting online for a really long time that Nvidia is going to use the Samsung 8 nanometer node rather than TSMC's 7 nanometer node. And while we don't know the exact specifics about these different process nodes and how they compare, what we do know is there's been a lot of people online who have claimed that the TSMC 7 nanometer node is the more advanced node. So knowing that, we can see that once again AMD is going to have the advantage when it comes to the process node, which of course gives you a big leg up. And so if they can make improvements this time around, you know, that gives them a real shot. Another thing that popped up online that gave me the thought that, you know, AMD could win this time around is the fact that, you know, during one of AMD's presentations, they stated that the RDNA 2 architecture, which Big Navi will be based on, is going to have another 50% performance per watt gain. And, you know, normally during these presentations, I like to take things with, you know, a whole truckload of salt. I don't like to really take them at their word. However, they said that about RDNA 1, and as far as I can tell, they were very truthful about that. It did end up having 50% more performance per watt. So, you know, I'm going to take their word this time and hopefully they don't let me down. And yeah, we'll probably see another 50% performance per watt gain. And I don't think we're going to see something like that from NVIDIA. You know, we could, I could be wrong, but that's a huge improvement to make two years in a row. And I think... You know, after RDNA 1 pretty much brought them in line with NVIDIA, RDNA 2 could make them highly competitive even with NVIDIA's next architecture. And then that brings me to the next leak slash rumor that's been going around the internet that the RTX 3080 slash 3080 Ti could have 320 watt or 350 watt variants. And you know, looking at the information, that gets me thinking that, you know, maybe Nvidia is a little bit worried. Maybe after that presentation, or maybe they got their hands on some other information we don't know about, they began to look at AMD's cards and take them more seriously and go, hey, you know what, this time around, we might have actually underestimated them and we're gonna have to boost our power to boost, or basically overclock our cards out of the box to make sure that we win. Because if I know anything about NVIDIA, it's that they hate losing. They basically need to win because they understand the strategy of having the fastest product on the market makes other people buy lower tier products because they look at you and they look at your fastest card and say, hey, they have the fastest card. And then to them, they say they have the fastest cards. So they go out and buy them and they don't really compare them to their competitor. It, you know, it's a weird thing that consumers do, but I'm telling you, it happens. And then we had this other leak that showed up online recently about a 12 pin connector that I believe can supply up to like 600 watts for Nvidia's newest graphics cards. And you know, at first I was like, no, no way this is real, this can't be true. But as it turns out, you know, after listening to PC World and Gamers Nexus, I found that, yeah, this is most likely true. You know, especially when you look at that Gamers Nexus video where he talks about it, he basically confirms that, yes, this is real. NVIDIA has been looking into this for a long time. And in fact, it probably will show up on some of their products now. He seemed to think it was more likely that it would show up on some sort of, uh, you know, system integrator type of build, you know, where you don't really get the card yourself, but a system integrator puts it into a whole PC that you buy, or maybe it'll be on, you know, some sort of uh, data acceleration card. Uh, you know, who knows? We'll have to sit, wait and see. But it seemed like when he talked to aftermarket uh, AIB partners that they were saying, no, we're pretty much planning on sticking with the good old tried and true 8-pin connectors. So I, I think that's what we're going to see. But yeah, this adapter is real and it probably will show up on some products. So 
yeah, NVIDIA might be actually pushing their power limit further on some of their products. And who knows, they might have, say, an overclocked variant of the 3080 and 3080 Ti, maybe two gigahertz editions or over that, and that they just have waiting in case AMD's cards are as good as they're looking. And so they have a backup so that, you know, at least when you show the two cards stock to stock without any overclocking, uh, the basically pre-overclocked NVIDIA cards will still win by a slim margin. And so, you know, talking about that, there was also another leak that came out recently that showed that the RTX 3080 is going to be 50% faster than the 2080, basically making it 20% faster than the 2080 Ti. Now, I don't know for sure how real this is, but this could be like one of those basically overclocked variants, a 320 watt or 350 watt card, which has been basically totally unlocked and gets another, you know, 10, 5, 15% performance over what they were originally targeting because they really let the card go. But after hearing all the different reasons as to why I think AMD stands a real chance this time around, you're probably still wondering what the specs in performance of the 3080, 3080 Ti, and Big Navi will be. And so let's go over those based upon not only history, but also the various leaks and rumors that have appeared online. So starting out, I think first off, we're going to get the RTX 3080. I, you know, there's been a lot of rumors that it's going to have like 4,352 shaders, uh, you know, oddly the same amount as the 2080 Ti. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly what it's going to be. And my guess is that it would probably be more like 3,840 shaders, you know, give or take some. And so if we do the math with, say, you know, maybe it gets around 2 gigahertz for a boost clock, you would see a card that's probably somewhere between about 10 and 20% faster than an RTX 2080 Ti. So yeah, that rumor could be true. There could be an RTX 3080 out there somewhere that is 20% faster than a 2080 Ti. Will that be the final silicon? Who knows, we'll just have to wait and see. But then I think the next card you're gonna see that's gonna be a little bit faster than that is that if Big Navi releases with 64 compute units, which would give it, you know, 4,096 shaders, then that card will probably be between 20 and 30% faster than a 2080 Ti, and, you know, give or take some, uh, depending on how they get their IPC. And then the next thing I think that would come after that in terms of performance is if AMD actually makes a big Navi with 72 compute units, and this is a big if, we don't know for sure, but there have definitely been a lot of leaks online suggesting that that is the case, then you'll probably get a card with, you know, 4,608 shaders from the 72 compute units, because, of course, you take 72 compute units times 64 to get the amount of shaders, and then that would give you probably, in, you know, doing the math of what I believe the clock speeds will be, which for Big Navi, I think they're going to rest somewhere between 2.2 and 2.3 gigahertz, depending on how many shaders are in the card. And of course, so then that would give you between 30 and 40% faster than a 2080 Ti. So that would be a big step up, especially if it does end up hitting that 40% faster. And the next card that we'll probably see in terms of performance that will be faster will be the RTX 3080 Ti, which I believe will have around 5,300 shaders. There's been a leak that's been persisting online uh, from the YouTuber Moore's Law is Dead that'll have 5,376. You know, it sounds pretty reasonable. That do, that makes sense. And if it does get around that amount of shaders, you'll probably see between 35 and 45% faster than a 2080 Ti because that thing will probably boost close to 2 gigahertz with the uh, boost algorithm in place. And then you will see if this happens, the fastest card could be a big Navi with 80 compute units. And so if you take those 80 compute units, you will get 5,120 shaders. And, you know, if that thing hits around 2.2 gigahertz, which I don't see any reason why it can't since the PS5 hits, you know, 2.23 gigahertz, I believe, well, then you'd see a card that's between 40 and 50% faster than a 2080 Ti and would be the fastest card on the market. And, you know, this is something that could happen, but we don't know for sure. It's all going to come down to final clocks and final IPC in the end. And of course, if NVIDIA sees all this and they suddenly you know, freak out and go, okay, we need to really unlock the power limits, hit 350 watts, they could end up winning by like 5%, even against a big knobby 80 compute unit version. It's something that could happen. But again, we'll just have to wait and see when all these come out. This is just my opinion. I'd love to see what you think the specs of these final cards are going to be in the comments below. And then, of course, are you interested in buying either of them? I'll try and get back to as many of the comments as I can. And, of course, I will see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, NVIDIA and Intel drop prices. 
Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.